Hey guys and gals, Insomnia from UnrealTech.net, a divisional BlenderTech.com here. Sorry about no videos or returned emails lately. We've been doing many game jams and I've started a new four year session at university. This program workflow to Unreal Engine 4 I'm going to show you is Substance Painter. I'd like to start this series off with an overview of the program and why I use Substance Painter for most of my texturing needs now. So Algorithmic, the company behind the Substance uh, series, Substance Designer, Substance Painter, and Bitmap 2 Material, saw how successful Epic Games was with their $19 a month business plan and they went that way too. So now you can basically rent to own a Substance Designer, Painter, and Bitmap 2 Material for $19.90 a month through their Substance Live program which gives you free stuff every month and as you can see it's a rent to own system or you can just make your full payment. This is a great business model because what I spent basically as you can see designer is 600, painter is 600, bitmap to material is 100 and substance database is $1600. What used to cost over $3000 is now available to indie and hobbyist artists for 19.90 a month. They also have the ability to trial substance designer, painter and bitmap to material for 30 days for free. The only thing is, uh, they're all full featured, but Bitmap 2 material will create watermarks, but the other two are completely fully featured. So we're going to be focusing on Substance Painter. What is Substance Painter? Itself doesn't just let you paint with color or built-in materials. You know, you could say, okay, maybe this guy had some metal materials he painted, and then maybe he took um, some stencils and made this camo, and you know, it took him you know weeks and weeks and weeks to get all these fibers no not at all um, you can import materials that you make in their other major program substance designer to use so he might have created say a camo material proceed a procedural camo material um, like a carbon fiber material and so on and so forth so you can import materials you make in that program as well as the use of all their preset materials and smart materials and you can also paint with particle systems so you can paint say like leaky water and the actual particles will follow your mesh and apply um, paint to all the different texture maps and um, you can also use all sorts of generators so they have uh, dirt generators, dust generators, grease generators and um, you can use these for masking as well as just adding on effects so um, you can see there's probably a little bit of a uh, generator used for this wear and tear that's just barely on there and they also have uh, filters so you can do blur um, you can paint uh, with opacity so you can do translucent parts you can paint with emissiveness so you can uh, do parts that glow and they have a bunch of procedural textures um, stuff like bricks and uh, all the standard procedurals you would expect all right now for $19.90 a month it's also an amazing tool for baking state of the art ambient occlusion maps normal maps other stuff like that from high to low poly models so let's go over this quickly so um you can paint full materials in real time up to 4k so yeah you can pick a material and then start painting it so this would be like some sort of leather material that you could paint a next generation viewport so you can preview it in a physically based viewport for um feedback directly on your uh, what you're doing it is memory heavy heavy as you can see substance just crashed on me in the background they have post process effects and shaders like a tune shader and you can you can make all your own and import them and yeah like I said particles so uh, some of my favorites is there's a cracked glass so when I'm working on cars I can do the cracked glass uh, particle a paint physics system to make uh, the like the windshield cracked and what I'm doing organic something like say this character I like the vein generator so it it goes and it follows your mesh and it creates veins basically very very cool you can see it used here for blood leaking out and some scratches and stuff smart materials so basically what these are are drag and drop materials that automatically um, set up filters 
that conform to your mask. So what happened in this instance, it was probably they dropped in a smart, a smart material and it automatically figured out where it needed to be weared down and, and stuff like that based on this mesh. And of course, with settings that you can adjust. And so this is the baking I was talking about. You can bake um, texture maps, which are A, used for stuff like smart materials, but B, you can also use them later in your final setup in Unreal or whatever. So you can ha take your ambient occlusion map, or if you need a world space normal, or if you need a vertex color map, a or if you need a thickness map, curvature map, whatever they got it covered. So let's take a look at the actual program really quick and actually look at what I was talking about before we move on. So this is a car I did for our last game that didn't end up getting used. And this really only took me a few hours to do, if that. And so you can really see the power that all these uh, generators and, and smart materials and such have. So this is their um, PBR previewing. So I can go back to just regular um, textures as they would be lit and unlit. You can also see wireframe uh, in real time. And you can also view 2D if you want to just paint directly on your UV maps or 3D 2D but I like to work in 3D it is a painting program um, so yeah what I was talking about uh, earlier so uh, non-destructive so what that means is right now I'm in 1024 and everything looks great if I bump it down to 128 it'll take a second to recalculate as you can see we've lost some details so what I've done is I've changed body main, uh, we'll just go solo on that, to 128 by 128 and obviously it goes down to this extremely low quality. But what non-destructive means is it remembers every single stroke. So if I change it back to say uh, 1024, since it remembers every single stroke, I don't lose any detail going back and forth. So if it's hard on my system at 4K, I can uh, I can I can paint in say one one K or five twelve by five twelve, and as you can see, I lost no detail. And when I go to export, I can even bump it up to a higher resolution and get more detail out of it if that's the size that I require or want. So as you can see, we get a little more detail. So let's just go over the basic uh, flow of the program. I'm gonna bump it down to five twelve just for recording. So we have our uh, texture set here. So you choose a size and what you want. So we have a base color, we have a height map for um, generating normal maps in the end. We have a roughness map and we have a metallic map. So that's just a basic PBR, PBR roughness metallic setup is what they call that. But you can add as many maps as you want. So let's say we want an emissive map for um, glowing. We wanted a uh, index of reflection map for like lenses. Let's say we wanted an uh, anastrophe angle map. <laughs> you know, if we needed that for uh, anastrophic metal and stuff, um, you you can add all these different maps: transmissive, specular, reflection, opacity, normal, glossiness, displacement, um, anastrophe and ambient occlusion as well as your base color height roughness metallic and emissive so and you can create your own of course too and you can choose um, between uh, you, of course your sRGB8 um, regular RGB8 L16 L16 floating L32 float like for example your uh, your height map for example doesn't need uh, red green and blue it just needs a uh, a grayscale map or whatever but anyways moving on so you have additional maps so for this specific material um, body main so this part of the mesh it's a material I've uh, unwrapped this part of the mesh and applied this material to it that's why I have this body main here as you can see I have all these different materials applied to different parts of the mesh and unwrapped separately so what a does is it bakes it for each part of it. So I go into the bake textures which I'll get into the next video and you choose 
your mesh or if you're working from in a if you're working in a low poly model and you want the details from the high poly you can import your high poly here and bake so you bake out a normal a world space normal uh, an ID map identification map which is for masking an ambient occlusion map which you know a curvature map that tells you uh, about convexity and concavity of the mesh uh, a position map which uh, tells you the XYZ world space coordinates of all points on the mesh and a thickness map which averages um, directions opposite to the normal so it's like the ambient occlusion except it casts rays in the opposite direction of the surface normal so basically backwards of the surface and you can choose an output size again up to 4k and it's, it's got some settings for uh, some of them so that's why this ambient occlusion map is great. You can go, you can bump the secondary rays way up to get a super high quality. You wouldn't do that for your workflow, but you would do that afterwards to get an AO map. And you could bake a super, super high quality one. It creates absolutely great maps. You can see um, the ambient occlusion maps it bakes are just beautiful. Um, even the normals that it bakes are just great. And, and of course you have your thickness maps and position and all sorts of things so yeah you have uh, texture baking and then we have our textured list so this is our actual materials that we're working with and we have a we can choose a different mode unlit lit of course we can go back to material we can also go between different channels so that was our base color here's our height map here's our roughness so remember we have all the these set up and here's our metallic and if we added a uh, emissive for example for glowy stuff we can go to the next channel and we would have uh, emissive so we could start painting emissive stuff obviously yeah so moving on we have a log and some post effects so you can add anti-aliasing on tone mapping depth of field etc etc and so here's your tool shelf I want to uh, talk about the layers here. So you have layers just like in Photoshop. So in addition to remembering your strokes, you also have layers. So if I turn off layer 2, that's this cracked um, effect. I have the racing stripes. I have rocker overspray, which is just some stenciling I did. I have the little horse logo here. I have a fill layer, which is a it has a grease mask you can see which is an automatic mask that I added and we also have this machinery smart material and that is the core of it so as you can see beforehand it had no texturing but once I added the machinery smart material it knew where to add rust and where to add paint and of course I can adjust that manually but it's pretty good for automatic moving on to our tool shelf we have alphas so obviously alphas for your brush so if I was to begin painting um, I have my brush and so you can choose a brush and an alpha and so obviously that's gonna set up your uh, your alpha on your brush um, you have procedurals again I said like anastropic uh, bricks uh, fluid characters all sorts of things for doing um, doing stuff that would require like here we have different weaves and wood fibers and stuffs we have generators dirt dripping rust, uh, dust, uh, edge wear, uh, ground dirt, grease, paint wear, etc, etc. So generators, you can use um, textures, those are the ones that got baked, but you can also import textures such as this Mustang logo, and then I could use that as a stencil for example. So if I drag this into the uh, stencil here, as you can see we get the uh, the Mustang, uh, horse, pony, whatever you want to call it. And then if I was to start painting on a new layer, as you can see, it paints only where the stencil is. And I can adjust that, obviously, to wherever I want. So that's very useful for getting some cool looks. Onto filters, so you have blur, uh, high-pass filter, you have grease, plastic, rust weathering, sun bleaching, stuff like that. So there's some interesting things there. 
you have shaders so pixelated tune um, so we could use a different setup than what we're using right now which is obviously just PBR metal roughness if we go into the material we can see it's a PBR metal rough but we can change it to you know pixelated and again I'm at a lower quality pixelated tune shader and they have this all built in so you can get some different looks and just export it right out but if you don't want that you just move straight back to your uh, PBR uh, setup of choice and so you have particles which are the most fun so you can use actual physical particles to paint I'll show you that in a minute um, and you can use all of these to set up presets so we have some presets we have all these different brushes so we have you know uh, fibers and scratches and cotton and dirt and whatever we have particles so this is the cool cool thing so I'll take uh, fire for example where are you or I'll take veins this is a cool one so all I do is I click and as you can see it wraps around my mesh um, finding um, which direction it should go to paint what it thinks are veins and my white color that I've chosen and so yeah stuff like organic spread again I'm working a very low um, a very low uh, texture size and so here it is fire burn so that's a very cool one you can see the particles move and follow your mesh and they get stuck and they apply it realistically and then we have a few tools bullet impact um, frost fur uh, metal stitches and this looks better in material mode obviously uh, bolts and screws and so you can again these are presets and you can make your own obviously and then we have material so this is all the stock materials it ships with which cover most of your needs and of course you can always make your own in substance designer so I can go in I can paint and at any time I can just choose a different material to paint with so right there's backpack painting Here's um, pine bark. All I gotta do is drag and drop, and then start painting. Done deal. And then we have smart materials. These are drag and drop into the um, into the um, layer panel, and based on those maps we baked. So you can see if we go to one of the Oh, this one's a very simple one. But if we go to machinery back here, it has a, a mask builder, and we'll go to the grease. It uses the thickness map to find out where to apply grease, more or less. And the mask builder, it uses all of these to find out where to build the dust mask. So very, very powerful. So yeah, that is Substance Designer in or Substance Painter, sorry, in a nutshell. So um. To begin working with Substance Painter, you won't need a graphics tablet. A mouse works just as well, and there really isn't any or much options for graphics tablet. But a tablet does help, especially if you've got a background using physical paintbrushes. Now, one word of warning that I've already mentioned a few times, it is very heavy on memory. Um, working at any size above 124, 1024, 1K, um, in material mode on a high poly model say over 50k triangles um, it's gonna be crashing constantly if you don't have more than 8 gigabytes of RAM so you'll often be painting in a lower size and then going back to look at it so um, it is very very memory um, expensive so anyways with that said sorry for the long introduction video in the next video we'll actually get started learning it and using it so don't forget to subscribe and i'm sure you'll see social media links on the screen if i remember to put them on as well as my new intro video so remember create your way